some changes are a come into that show open you just saw, and our audience could be a part of it. Details are coming up in just a few minutes. I'm Carl Azus, delivering your Friday edition of CNN 10. A U.S. government rule requiring masks on public transportation is up in the air. Right now, Americans do not have to cover their faces on planes, trains, buses, and ride shares. That's because of a federal judge's ruling earlier this week that struck down the Biden administration's mask mandate for public transport. The court ruled that the Centers for Disease Control didn't have the authority to require people to wear masks. On Tuesday, when he was asked about whether people should keep wearing masks on planes, President Joe Biden responded, quote, that's up to them. But Wednesday night, his administration said it would appeal the court's decision. Officials say the CDC had determined that a mask mandate for travelers was still necessary to protect the public health against COVID-19. So what happens next? Well, after the mandate was struck down, many U.S. airlines and public transit systems made masks optional. They still are. Travelers in the U.S. won't be required to wear them again unless an appeals court overturns the lower court's decision. But no matter what it decides, this case could eventually get to the U.S. Supreme Court, and it has ruled against some of the government's COVID-19 requirements in the past. Last month, before any of this happened, several major airlines had asked the Biden administration to get rid of its mask mandate. United was one of them, and its CEO now says he thinks it's unlikely that one will come back anytime soon. 10 Second Trivia The equator runs directly through which of these countries? Kenya, Tanzania, Nigeria, or Ethiopia? All of these countries are close to the equator, but only Kenya is actually crossed by it. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is probably the best known collection of litter in the ocean. It's located between Hawaii and California. It extends below the ocean surface and contains particles of everything from styrofoam cups and bottle caps to fishing nets and microplastics, tiny pieces of trash. But this isn't the only place where garbage collects in the sea. New research is being done on and around the coast of Kenya in the western Indian Ocean to get a sense of plastic pollution there and to devise new methods of dealing with it. The ancient city of Lamu, a popular part of the northern coast of Kenya, but the Indian Ocean brings more than just tourists to the Lamu archipelago. Tons of marine litter is also washing up on these shores, mostly plastic. They pick up what they can, but more keeps coming. Uh, this is, it was manufactured in Indonesia. Definitely, I've never seen this being sold in Kenya. Fast Clean, never seen this. That's not a brand from here. That's not a brand that's sold over here. It's manufactured in China. China. Nestle noodles, don't recognize them over here. Kenya banned single-use plastic from protected areas, including beaches. But they're still being manufactured locally and piling up all over the coastline. A major headache for the local government. We're more re receivers of the plastics than... Uh, the givers of the plastic. This plastic is uh, dumped elsewhere and uh, drifts to our shores. I guess we're a magnetic <laughs> place. And we hope we can also attract good things and not just uh, junk. Bitty, who calls herself Mama Plastiki, has been collecting that junk from her community for 35 years, but there's nowhere to take most of it. We don't have a market for this plastic, so it has slowed us down a little. We had two people working on this, but we ran out of money, so we're stuck with it. Even this better funded effort to clean up plastic from around Lamu is barely scratching the surface. The mountains of plastic waste just keeps growing here on the Kenyan coast and is threatening the oceans, the mangroves, and the tourism industry here. Discarded plastic is sorted, then crushed at this facility, breaking it down into smaller particles that can get molded into something more useful. This is incredibly strong. This is a product of sorted, crushed, and washed plastics. They get this. And it could revolutionize construction. This one gonna revolutionize where timber is used. We can innovate and put whatever is lying in their back backyards to something useful. These boats are leading a scientific expedition to study the impact of marine litter on the East African coast. Its organizers, the Flip Floppy Project, say this is the first time such research is being carried out on this part of the West Indian Ocean. The scientists are measuring the presence of nano, micro and macroplastics in the ocean. 
What do you hope to learn from the samples you're collecting? For the first time, we'll be able to understand how deep can you still find plastic pollution. Most focus has been on the surface. Now I want to understand because actually even most of the organisms, they live underneath. By 2050, without intervention, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean, the UN has warned. Some of it may build the next sailing boat like this one, made entirely of flip-flops. But most of it just suffocates marine life and coastal communities. Someone needs to pay for this. This is not something that these communities and us as local organizations can support and solve. Yes, we are contributing to it, but it's a global problem. It's no different to climate change in that respect. Residents here are doing every bit they can to tackle a global problem at the local level. For the first time in more than 10 years, Netflix has lost subscribers. The US-based streaming service and production company has been struggling in 2022. It had been expected to add two and a half million subscribers in the first three months of this year. Instead, Netflix lost 200,000 subscribers, and its stock as a result of that announcement this week took a nosedive on the market. It dropped 35% on Wednesday alone. Netflix still has more than 221 million subscribers around the world. It's still profitable. The company made $1.6 billion in the first part of this year, but that's down from $1.7 billion in the same period last year. Why is this happening? Consumers are fatigued, I think, with all the streaming options that are out there and an environment of rising inflation. Everything is more expensive. Cutting back on streaming services is a natural thing to potentially do if you're worried about when you go to the grocery store or order groceries online and how much more expensive everything that you need to eat and live on a daily basis, which is not Netflix exactly, uh, you know, is rising and going higher. So I think that is potentially a problem. And then that crackdown on password sharing is also likely to hurt Netflix because it shows that there aren't really as many paying consumers as Netflix would like. I've always thought our show open, like Fridays, is awesome, but it's been the same for five years now, so we're working on an update. Parents and teachers, CNN 10 is looking for original artwork featuring the number 10 to use in our new show opening. We're particularly interested in creative number 10s that illustrate something cool about the place where you live. If you'd like to take part, please send a photo of your artwork to CNN10 at CNN.com with your name, location, and best way to contact you through email or phone number. If you think 10 bucks is a little steep for three tacos, at least this Chipotle in Minnesota lets you eat them at the lake so to speak. A badly designed parking lot here has had a puddle for years. Some days it's bigger than others, but it's always there. So locals started calling it Lake Chipotle, and now it's a tourist attraction with its own website, fan clubs, and a spot on Google Maps. Some critics say it's inconvenient when it floods too many spaces, but it sure gives folks something to talk about. Of course, it makes for a soggy bowl, it chips away at the places to park your carnitas, and some will say, okay, so we gotta find somewhere else to burrito. But for those who said, holy guacamole, when they saw such a lake lot, at least the drink is free. I'm Carl Azus. Today's shout out goes out to Atchison County Community High School. It is located in Effingham, Kansas. Thank you for subscribing and leaving a comment at youtube.com slash CNN.